these bundles that we've been talking about, simply mechanical graveyards for the personality crystals, because that's what they are. They're bundling together in alignment with frequency, and then that frequency being attractive and attracted to whatever it is that the embodied personality crystal is tuning into. So this is not about exalting angels, demons, ghosts, gods, entities, or aliens at all. Because the bundles in and of themselves, they do not have an attunement to these things by themselves. It's not the alien bundle. It's not the entity bundle. They're all human de-incarnate crystal bundles. And this is a dead end. When you go into a rogue crystal bundle, it's a dead end street because it's not going back to the original crystal bundle, the 16 prime crystal bundles that are around our earth. You're going to be in this bundle if you don't get your bardo until the end of whatever process it is. And whether you get out beyond whatever that process is outside of that bundle is highly unlikely. So the rogue crystal bundle is not something that you want to aspire to try and channel or aspire to try and be, become. It is not. It is a dead end street. A mechanism when the hope people who can see the demons that ride people get transferred to the entities thinking that you're filtering or channeling an entity outside of oneself that's a problem and then the two feeling guilty about things that are actually not your trip no fault the fact of this being a mechanism is that the number of these mechanisms have increased the power of the not self-interpretation of these forces. So as these rogue crystal bundles grow, and as more and more people populate the earth, and more and more people die to uh, without Bardo to enhance even more of these bundles, it's not like there's a bundle for every human, by the way. So it's not like, I don't know how many millions of rogue crystal bundles there are, but it's not like everybody's going to be, you know, walking around with this constant rogue crystal bundle in them. It's attracted to frequency. So now in this Maya, because we've had so many uh, thousands of years of people dying and being reborn, we have really ancient um, language and histories, except for the entities and aliens. Now we have what people think of as an entity or alien being a homogenized construct. Look at the big bug eyes. Look at the angels with their wings. Yeah. Back in the day, the very old angels, it was lots and lots of wings and just eyes. Cerebim or cherubim, very different than these human creatures with their wings and their eyes and their faces that all look the same. So when you talk to a to anybody in the homogenized world and you talk about demons, oh, we get a classic scary monster thing, right? And so when we, what we think of as demons, we think bad. We think of as angels, we think, ah, good, right? But they're not bad beings, the demon ones. They're not holy people, the angel ones. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the person who is interpreting that crystal bundle. That's why it's, he says that your interpretation of the bundle tells you more about you than it does about them at all. The bundles, by their physics, have an attraction to each other because of the frequency field. Everything is frequency, everything is vibrating, and everything is capable of attuning or not. Rogue crystal bundle is capable of impacting one being at a time. So if there's going to be an understanding of us comprehending what these things are, the accumulated personality crystal consciousness experience that bundle together, and then we who are filtering the neutrino ocean just as they are filtering the neutrino ocean, they are capable of impacting us from within contact of our aura. So they have to be within close proximity. They can encounter us we can interpret them. They can only affect us one being at a time. 
So if you're not correct and you're operating accordingly with your not self, the frequency you're putting out is attracting a force that is not natural for you. And then you're obviously going to run into trouble because now you give authority to something outside of you. You're the one who gives authority to the outer gods. You're the two who gives authority to the entity you're channeling. You're the three who gives authority to the alien invasion or not. <laughs> Maybe they're benef benefic aliens, but you give them authority. You're the four who gives uh, the prayers or, you know, attention to the angels. You're the five who gives attention to the demons and have those demons ride you. You're the six who gives attention to the ghosts. Who died? When was it? So you're running into trouble because you're focused away from your truth, your correct motivational frequency. And here's the manifestation or the signpost of us being attracted to something that is not right for us. And so there we have our sign. I liken it to when Saturn is punishing you, you feel disciplined. Yeah. Here we have our sign, the transference, signpost, not awake, not aware, not intelligent, blind, blinded. There's not enough of these rogue crystal bundles for every single human being on the planet. So you don't have to worry about everybody all of a sudden, you know, being ridden by whatever ghosts, gods, demons, entities, aliens, angels plague them. Because there may be millions of them as far as very large in terms of number and their content, but compared to how many billions of humans on the planet, thank heavens, there's not enough for everyone to interact with the forces. And so that's why it's more of a rarity. And uh, people got to really have some guts or really be insane to admit that they're talking to angels or demons or ghosts or gods or entities or aliens. These Crystal bundles are not aware. They do not know what they are. They are simply an element of the program in the program that you as physical are interpreting these non-physical bundles. And when you understand this in its proper context, you can see that the rogue crystal bundles are part of the greater homogenization program. These shine a light on the weak aspects of oneself. They only show up when the being is in weakness, as in not self. And then transference, you get to externalize it through the experience. And that's when you transfer your authority away from internal and put it on the external. You're trying to free yourself from the pain, the suffering, the challenge, the upset, the um, recriminations or whatever. You're trying to find some solace in something outside of you when the only thing you can trust is your own authority. And you'll never find it when you're in transference. When people tell about their encounter, look at their design, look at their not self, look at their transference. So look at how certain someone is with their open ashna, yeah, or desperately trying to prove with their open ego center. And when they say the next time that you read about it, or when your client says anything about it, when they say that I met the gods and you see that they are first color, then you know that they were in transference. He wants you to think about transference and look at their not self from the perspective of really look to where they've been transferred and listen to what they have to say. It can be very shocking because it's not what you think. Their transference is something more. It's not just them. They're now transferred and interpreting non-physical. So these powerful homogenized concepts, very, very powerful because of how many eons we've been alive and how many uh, disincarnate beings there are. There's a tendency to assume that the more correct you are, the less chance you're going to have an encounter and then, in fact, heal yourself of whatever encounter you might have had in the past. What if you were a two thinking that you're channeling an entity and now you're operating in alignment, and now you can't connect with your entity. You don't even want to. You don't even try. So these transferred, they're expressed really loudly and deeply, and only through the not-self, according to Ra. This is what has given them their vitality and their description out in the world. 
We don't know what first color truly is when it's interpreted correctly, nor two, nor three, nor four, nor five, nor six. So basically, what you're looking at, these themes being the real problems of the psychological nature of a homogenized humanity. So when you deconstruct what's going on in somebody's design, and you look at the framing of their interpretation of non-physical, and you see that it is in transference or not, what if it's not? What if it's something else? What do you notice? What do you learn? What do you feel? What do you recognize? How does it show up for you or for the others that are close to you? That